What's up, sons? It's Blydrod with Savitech once again, and today I want to bring you a review of the ASUS ROG Maximus 11 Z390 motherboard. In particular, this is the Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Special Edition. One of the first times I've seen a, a game partnership with a motherboard manufacturer, so I find that pretty exciting. We'll talk more about it right after this. Welcome back. So first things first, it does come with a copy of the game. Now it is about 10 to $20 depending on retailer, more expensive than just the Maximus Hero 11 by itself. However, if you factor in that $60 purchase of the game and you already need it, yes, it is going to be cheaper. So head on over with affiliate links in the description below if that is the question you had about this particular product, as I know that I had been seeing that float around in the Q and A's all over Newegg and Amazon. Pretty cool stuff there. Moving on, we basically have all of the standard features you would expect from a Z390 motherboard, which what's a Z390 motherboard? It is the latest chipset from Intel, which comes after their Z370 and is kind of partnered along to go along with the 9000 series chips. Some of the big things to note about the Z390 motherboards is that they do come with an additional four or eight pin CPU power. On this motherboard, it comes with a single uh, additional four pin. So you're gonna have a total of the eight pin additional CPU power and then an additional four pin. So what, whatever that comes out to 12, right? So you are going to have to have a power supply that accommodates for that. And that's something to note because not a lot of power supplies, well, not all power supplies, I should say, do come with an additional CPU power there. You are going to still have the 24 pin power adapter. And this board in particular doesn't come with anything like an additional power for the PCIe rails, like some other higher end motherboards do come with. So it does have the additional power for the CPU, but nothing additional for the PCIe. That being said, it does support two-way SLI and three-way crossfire. Now, if you go across those, you do need to keep in mind that as soon as you go to two-way, you drop those rails to by eight instead of by 16. They are reinforced rails and look pretty slick. As far as memory goes, it isn't a crazy overclocking motherboard, so it does still have four DIMMs as opposed to just some of the higher end ASUS will just have two DIMMs so you can get that really high end overclocking. That's primarily gonna be for LN2, so this is a little bit more balanced and more towards the mainstream, of course, or just you know an actual PC that you're gonna use all the time. And that being said, it does also support up to memory overclocks of 4,400 megahertz, which is crazy high. I can't validate that that works because I do not have a kit that pushes that high, but I do have the 3,200 megahertz in there and it went ahead and took off right away. Now, I don't have a ninth gen CPU currently, so we have the 8700K in there and we took that 8700K out of the ASRock Z370 uh, Pro SLI gaming Wi-Fi, whatever. So. The difference is, as far as overclocks go, right off, out, off the bat, is I was happy that even though we had multi-core enhancement on or on auto on the motherboard immediately, it didn't seem to actually apply it when we got into the OS. So I was happy that it's not forcing multi-core enhancement on this particular BIOS revision. And that's a relief because multi-core enhancement does significantly increase temperatures and cause system instabilities depending on the cooling you have available and how good your chip is. That being said, ASUS seems to have basically hit the nail on the head with its AI tuning. And if you just go ahead and use it, surprisingly the chip in here uh, that I put in here, it pretty much dialed right into where I had on my manual overclocks previously without me doing anything but checking the box for the AI overclocking. So yes, that means it put it at 4.8 gigahertz at 1.28 volts, which is a little higher than I had for the manual overclocking, but it is allotting for, I believe it was two and four cores to go up to four point, up to four cores, up to 4.9 gigahertz. 
and I never had that kind of granularity. So it actually did dial in a better overclock than I had previously done manually, uh, just sacrificing a little bit more voltage, which then pushed the hottest temperature core up to about 90 degrees, and that's on the Noctua NHD15 with some just basic Arctic MX4 thermal paste and no D-lid. And all in all though, it, it seems to be able to just perform right out of the box with that auto overclock better than I've ever seen with any other auto overclock. So I was really impressed with that. If you take a look at the package that gets installed right away too, if you just throw Windows 10 on there and boot into the, the operating system, it will actually prompt you through the Windows 10 store for the ASRock, uh, I believe it's like the, the box or battle box software package, which is gonna help you find drivers and so on and so forth. It will also allow you to get the software suites like the AI overclocking utility and of course uh, ASUS Aura RGB and it's all in one tiny package and you get prompted for it in Windows 10, making this probably the easiest driver install process I've ever seen. Of course, if you have any more issues, you can go to the websites and actually get that package from there as well. But it was, that was uh, curious. It's becoming easier and easier to find the right drivers and get your system up and running even with overclocks, thanks to ASUS. ASUS is probably number one software package I've seen from a motherboard manufacturer so far or to date. Now it does have two M.2 slots, but you do need to keep in mind that one of them only does PCIe and one of them will do PCIe and SATA. So if you get an M.2 drive with a SATA protocol, you need to make sure you take a look at the motherboard manual and plug that in accordingly. Otherwise you'll get a message at the beginning saying that basically it doesn't support it if you put, for example, a SATA drive in a PCIe only slot. It does have two covers, one cover for each of your M.2 drives. And I didn't test those because I don't wanna go wasting those because this is gonna be getting put into a mod and I will be using them at least for looks. Most likely it won't really help temperatures at all on those drives because we've seen those not really work in the past, but aesthetically it is very pleasing. You have six SATA ports with support for RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. You have an Intel Gigabit LAN, so you aren't having any third party uh, LAN devices there, along with Intel Wireless AC that does support MuMimo, so you can get those super combined speeds as long as your router supports it, and Bluetooth 5.0. You have four USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports, four at the back panel, and one type C and three type A's. You have two USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports, two at the back panel, and two type A's. And then you have six USB 2.0 ports, two at the back panel, and then four at the midboard. You have one single USB 3.1 Gen 2 front panel connector and that does support the USB-C connection or format, depending on what, what case you have, if it does support it. It supports the Microfine Alloy Chokes, 10K Black Metallic Capacitors, Optimus MOSFET, and the BIOS flashback and clear CMOS buttons are on the uh, rear IO, which is super nice. And it comes with the pre-installed backplate, which is something that motherboards are starting to do a lot more of now. I don't know how I feel about that. I like it because my biggest complaint with like the cheap IOs are the little metal tabs that get in the way when you're trying to install this eliminates that. And I guess eliminates some of the hassle, but you still have to worry about making sure that the rear IO does get seated into the actual case. And that that is actually more difficult with it pre-installed, at least in my experience, than it is with it if not pre-installed and you just slapped it in yourself. So that's a weird feature for them to be uh, kind of touting, but that aside, let's talk about some of the motherboard temperatures. We talked about overclocking and we did a couple different tests. Luckily, ASUS does have VRM 
uh, temperature probes already on there. So if you get something like hardware info, you can monitor those. I didn't throw any probes on myself in particular, but what I am seeing here is a very good VRM cooling solution, albeit not with any additional fans or anything like that. We are in the Cooler Master XB Evo, which has two 140 millimeter fans in the front blowing through the case. And then, like I said, we have the Noctua NHD 15, and that seems to be keeping the VRMs cool even while overclocked up to 1.34 volts on the V-Core. The VRMs are staying under 50 degrees Celsius at all times, and that is also with the Asus AI overclocking implemented as well. As far as the Call of Duty features goes, it is very Call of Duty heavy as far as branding, so if that's something you don't like, obviously, Go grab the non-branded version of this and just give up getting a copy of the game, which if you don't like Call of Duty, then that's a no-brainer pretty much because you'll save yourself 10 to $20. You have the skull on the rear I.O. cover and you have an RGB logo on the uh, bottom of the chipset or where the chipset would be and you can s pretty much change that uh, to whatever color you want It comes standard uh, lit up as orange which if you're doing a Call of Duty theme would be what you would want So pretty standard there. You do have the branding for Call of Duty across both the M.2 uh, heat sinks heat sinks but I wouldn't really plan on those like I stated earlier uh, to actually cool your NVMe drives and you have all of the headers that you could ever want for RGB. It's all over the place, all over the board. Tons of fan connections. You have separate fan connections for your, your CPU, as well as the water pump, and they even have a specific one for AIOs, which I found interesting, and I'm not sure how that gets implemented. I don't have an AIO to integrate with it right now, but I do want to deep dive into that later as well. I also want to do a video that covers just the BIOS because they've changed a lot in the BIOS since I've played with an ASUS motherboard. But going through that in a review video when you guys really just need to know how well it performs, I felt would make this video a little too lengthy. So we're going to put that as a supplemental separate video and we'll go over the BIOS and all of the supporting software in that video. If you have any specific questions about this motherboard, let me know in the comments section below. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, leave the like. If you didn't, you can hit the dislike, hit the unsub, and uh, get the hell out of Dodge. I'll see you next Tuesday.